Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another StarCraft Brood War remastered commentary. We've got Quickly versus Shine. I saw these two names and I knew I had to get on this cast. I've been watching a lot of Quickly games lately and really enjoying uh, seeing this up and coming Protoss player stick it to some pros and Shine here. I always love to watch him as well. I yearn for the days the uh, Shine versus Flash finals back in those days. You guys remember that old Shine? Mr. Bag of Builds, Mr. Swiss Army Zerg player. Always had the right tool for the job. He doesn't really play too much like that anymore. He's much more of a macro player these days. I think he's just trying to round himself out a little bit more. Um, maybe he'll you know, throw in some more crazy builds sometime in the future but it really feels like he's playing the long game he's just trying to get to that next level of macro zerg before he uh you know takes another run at an asl he still tries to compete in asl but he doesn't play like he did back in those days he doesn't do uh, like all cheese or anything like that he's not um that type of player anymore it seems but you know it, it it's uh it's still interesting to watch and, and still interesting to see his development. Quickly here, going to start off with a forge. Yeah, I, I'm sorry guys, I'm just nostalgic for that season of ASL when he did so well. It was so much fun to see a cheesy Zerg go deep in an ASL. It really seems like, um, for the most part, macro oriented players are the ones that are going to go deep um for any race you know whether that's just pure macro terran like a light or a, a flash um or you know pure macro zerg like a soul key those are the ones that really seem to go deep um but then every once in a while we get somebody who can just think outside the box and play really really creatively uh, and that's what i loved about shine and We'll see if he has some creative stuff for us here. He is very good at reacting to what Protoss players do. Anytime there's like a crazy build coming out of a Protoss player, I love to see uh, how Shine reacts to it because he always seems to have the right response. And this is a great block by him just pushing away that first probe. Standing on the ramp. If he had let the probe get up here, it could have potentially slowed him down a little bit. But since he blocks it at the ramp, he goes ahead and grabs that hatchery right away gas is done he's gonna start mining that at three minutes but he threw that down around i think three minute 30 uh, for it to be done at this point so that's a pretty early gas here not really revealing what's going to happen just yet only two links have been made so pretty confident that it wasn't going to be a zell at first or anything like that so or a gateway first here even though he doesn't have an overlord down oh wait he does have overlord down here excuse me so he knows, he's seen everything. He knows that this is indeed uh, just a forge first. Out of quickly and what does quickly have as a follow up here? A hydrogen is on the way. Now, <clears throat> let's just think about this right here. That early, early gas, the hydrogen is here. It's going to be a bust, but is it going to be one with speed? It seems like not. It seems like he hasn't been able to afford that speed as well. He's only built two lings. Just two lings. He's being very greedy. Um, building such a small amount of lings here. He could easily get scouted. If quickly is really committed to trying to run by here into the main base. But Shine. He's going to get a couple extra hits. Man, chasing the probe like this. With the one Zergling is a little bit crazy. You've only got one ling here. One to try and block quickly from actually running into the main. I guess you can pull a, br a, a drone as well, potentially, to try and block that, but man, oh man. Quickly could easily run into the main here, I think. Um, gonna send out two Zealots now, and since we don't have any Lings at all, and I don't even see any Hydras in production, oh, a Hatchery comes down, that's interesting. So it looks like we're not gonna go for a Hydralis bust here, Instead, it's just going to be extra hatches, a lot of extra drones. You can see he's got four here at the third already. How many do we have? At the natural, seven. So, nine, seven, four with the extra hatchery is still potentially a hydralis bust. 
but it's not going to be that 973, that typical 973 play. I can't believe he sent the, zealot, the zealots back home. We saw just two lings. Quickly, what are we doing right now? That seems crazy to me. Two cannons do start. Uh, I think these are maybe safety cannons. Like, he doesn't really know what's happening right now. But... Uh, if there's no Hydras showing up, then he could just cancel. So it looks like as soon as the Hydras arrive, he'll realize that he does need to let these finish. Maybe even start some more cannons. Probably come out here and, and start another couple in just a second. He's got speed, I think, going to be on the way here soon. Didn't he have... Yeah, he's got the Citadel. I thought he started speed, but it looks like uh, might have canceled. I'm not really sure. Templar Archives... Is coming out here. He's going to run out with the Zealots. Just try to get some damage under these Hydras. We have speed on them now. So can't really get too much going there. But saves the gateway for a short period of time. The Forge is still alive for now. But I don't think he's going to be able to finish this plus one. I, I really think that this is going to end up getting killed here. He should be able to get the angle on it. No problem. We haven't had any kills on these Corsairs just yet. He's checking around. But I just saw nine drones in production, guys. So... A lot of drones are coming here. One Hydra back at home to defend. And only, what? what's this? Nine Hydras here at the front. Just going to push down this forge. So, full macro play after this. This is just the pressure uh, into macro. Quickly going to lose his plus one. That is really sad. He goes ahead and starts double forge inside the main. Things are not looking the greatest right now for him. He's in a bit of a rough spot here. I think that the Shine has maneuvered this pretty darn well. Um, two, three overlords going to go down. Four? Oh, wow. Four overlords just fell there. Um, paying the price for only having one Hydra back at home. Keeping so many at the front here. When he only needed a few to actually kill that forge. So, losing four overlords at this point in the game, it hurts. But it doesn't hurt that bad. We've already got 34 workers. So... We're not, uh, you know, the supply block's not going to kill us here. We've got plenty of production. We've got plenty of drones. We probably want to add on maybe another 10. Seven overlords in production right now. Jeez. That does hurt. Lair is not quite done yet, so we don't have speed overlord. And there are no DTs out on the map, so it doesn't actually have to worry about that. Oh, Corsair will end up falling. One more Corsair down here. Is that the four kill one? No, the four kill one actually went down. Um, must have been five, actually. Six more drones on the way. See, he would have liked to get these six drones out a little earlier so he could saturate this base. But they are going to pop out now, and he will switch back into Hydralis production. He's just going to have to hope that... Uh, quickly, he's been hiccuped enough by the loss of the gateway and the loss of the forge. Not be able to push out here too fast. And Shine will have some time to build up and get these Lurkers out. Lurker is on the way here. Full drone saturation. 50 workers. That's perfect for three base. Six hatch. Spire is going to come down now. He's kind of hiding it here in the natural. That's a little bit cute. Um, he's definitely seen the lack of Corsairs now. You know, there's only two made. But look at this. So smart. Quickly going to make a, a Dark Archon here. I don't know. Are we going to go and make a group of mutas? Or are we just going to make lurkers? Both options are open to us right now here as Shine. Um, he's going to run around with some lings. Just make sure that he can see when army is going to be coming out on the map. Spreading his overlords now as well. It's a good time to spread them since the Corsairs have been mostly dealt with at this point. Uh, I think the last Corsair did end up going down. I'm not 100% on that, but I think it did. We have quite a few Hydras running around right now. But it's uh, a little bit of a flimsy army. We need to start adding on Lurkers here soon. And he's taking the fourth base out here in the front. This is really typical on this map. Grabbing this base and holding this position with Lurker is, is very, very strong. 11 drones are about to pop out here. This is something I learned from a Queen video. Is right as you're building your lurkers, you make a massive wave of drones to saturate your fourth base. 
immediately when that hatchery is done and then you can switch back into production and have just a massive wave of units coming up uh, right afterwards so he's gonna just now starting metabolic boost that's kind of funny a little bit late on that but he's got the lurkers down now and he's gonna have a bunch of upgrades coming here double evolution chamber behind this fourth or third base gonna come out of quickly but we're not too concerned about that here as Shine. We're more concerned about this push that's eventually going to be coming um, with this many Dragoons and quite a lot of Templar that have been building up energy for a long time now. Even the Kydrin Amulet going to come online here. Ky Ky Kydarian? Ky Kydarian Amulet? I think that's what it's called. Um... I mean, we're going to have a lot of storms. We're going to have a lot of units. Eight gateways are pumping away right now. He's hiding that Dark Archon. There isn't going to be a transition, though, uh, it seems. He's not going to go for, like, a, a sudden mutilus switch. Uh, more so interested in just popping out some Scourge to make sure that he can snipe uh, observers when the time comes. Having a, a bit of a Hydralis Force around the side here is excellent. You can kind of dip in and maybe kill a cannon or two. Maybe, you know, kill some probes here at the third as the push is going on. And he does have enough lurker at this point to where it's not going to be easy for quickly to just break through this. Meanwhile, Hive is on the way here. We'll be seeing Defiler probably around that 14 minute Defiler. Really early, uh, well-timed Defiler here for... Shine and Shine's starting to branch out. He's looking for that fourth base and or fifth base, sorry. And quickly is actually taking the fourth now. So we are gonna have to see a fifth base here out of Shine relatively soon. Or he has to break this base down here, and I don't think he's gonna be able to do that. Dark Archon. Ooh, that storm. Losing one of the Templar and a second Templar almost going down as well. Dark Archon here just chilling. Will be very useful if something tries to come up this ramp. Maelstrom. Absolutely brutal. Just like uh, Storm. Uh, and the combination of the two is insane. So. He will be pulling his arm here. That's a lot of zealots. We've got a big group of lurkers here. So. Uh, I'm not too certain that this is going to work. If Quickly wants to try and break this ramp. I think maybe going around here. Let's zoom out a little bit. Going around, maybe coming through here. You know, getting into a, a position where you can take some trades, throw down some storms, and then kind of back away, back into the middle of the map. Threaten other locations. Right now, he's kind of moving through the middle here. Does see a big group of Hydra and Ling that's actually going to counterattack over here towards the third base. Maybe you can snipe a couple Templar here. One goes down, two go down in very quick succession. Everything going to run away for now. And uh, this is a great move by Shine. That was that counterattack force I was talking about um, quite a long time ago. He's going to try and catch the Hydras here as they retreat, but running into the Lurker Spines is not a good idea. You're going to lose way too many Zealots, and he does end up backing off from that position. A lot of Lings here right now, but they can disappear if you get up to this position and start to throw down storms on top of that big group there, things will disappear rather quickly. Let's take a look at the upgrades right before this next battle. It's 2-2 two, two to 1-1 one, one here for the Lings. So having that upgrade advantage is still very big for Protoss. The Zealots are going to trade pretty darn well with the Lings, at least before plagues come out here. A couple of lurkers on this high ground, and the Nidus is done here top left. Meanwhile, a counterattack going on over here down towards the uh, center right. Um, but this is going to be a tough hold here for Shine. He's trying to break up this ramp quickly. He's going to start casting some storms here. Get rid of a few of these lurkers so the zealots can actually make some progress. Once they're up, up on top of the ramp, though, can make a lot of that progress. And oh my goodness, so many units just flowing through this Nidus. I think that quickly is not going to be able to make any headway here. Yeah, the majority of his units go down. We will have a Dark Swarm on the ramp as well with Lurkers there. It's just not going to be a possibility and quickly will be denied. At the same time, losing this base over here. 
I mean, Shine playing a great control game right now. This is exactly what I was talking about, that he's just been slowly leveling up his overall macro game. He took away a lot of the lurkers from this area, so it is a little bit scary. Uh, if we rotate here as the Protoss and come into this area, we're going to have to unburrow and move everything back through the Nidus Canal. Army moving over here to the center right. Dragoon's kind of getting in the way right now. Pretty annoying. We should see a great storm here to clean up all of this before he takes this, uh, this base here over in the center right. Meanwhile, a attack coming down to the bottom center. Dark Swarm plus Lurker and Crackling is definitely the answer to these cannons here. But does he have enough Storm? Does he have enough Zealots to hold everything off? No, it looks like not. Reaver does pop out here, but it's a little bit too late. Zealots are going to come down. They should be able to clear everything. But this is uh, not the greatest trade now for quickly... Uh, zealots running in on top of lurkers, never what you exactly want to have happen. And meanwhile, another counterattack over here. All right, that's not going to do anything. Quickly, it looks like he's going to stabilize on five bases. And just five bases is enough for Protoss. You can hold on for a ridiculous amount of time against Zerg. Even with Zerg taking all of these bases here, he actually needs more than this. He needs this base. Or he needs to take these bases up here because Protoss will just trade and trade and trade and continue to build up this army. And we are going to mine out pretty quickly here as Zerg. We've got a lot of drones. So it's not like versus Terran where you don't really have as many drones. He really, he really made a lot of workers here in this game. Uh, so he is going to mine out rather quickly. And he's just kind of getting the bases. Oh, feedback there. Man, this Dark Archon's been alive for quite some time. No kills just yet, but he should start to get some kills here if he keeps using the feedback. Always great to see that ability get utilized. Oof. Damn. That's a lot of dead Hydras. And running up here into the front. Unfortunately, Dark Archon's going to take a lot of damage. Really could use to uh, drop the feedback. Did he actually get it there? I think he did. Yeah, I got, got one kill. Very nice. Getting rid of the Defilers from range. Uh, it's great usage of that early game unit. The the unit that is so fantastic at dealing with uh, Mutilus in the mid game is also just great in the late game as well. If you can keep it alive for this long and keep it in with your army and, and uh, you know keep that energy banking up, when the Defilers start to come out, picking them off uh, can give you opportunities to break through certain areas. Like, if he comes up here and throws down a feedback on that, suddenly this area is breakable. If he doesn't have the feedback or he doesn't land it, and there's Dark Swarm here, then it's, it's really not. So, the Dark Archon kind of changing the math for a lot of these fights. Shine really setting up some nice defensive spots. He's got a maxed out army here. So much Zerg in the middle of the map. He's going to be looking for some plagues now. We do not have feedback ready. Is he Is he going to be paying attention? Feedback, feedback. Get it. He should be able to get it. No. Just a second too late. He gets the feedback, but the plague does go down. And that's the first plague of the game. Getting quite a bit of damage onto some of these Dragoons. Some Zealots as well doing its job here, but quickly is going to be able to take the top right. Top right is a dangerous proposition here for Shine. He cannot allow that to, to go up and stay up. If we split the map, map in half here as a Protoss player, that's a winning situation. Big storm here on a lot of these lurkers as they start to come forward. Three lurker kills with just two storms. Great storms here at the front as well. The Ling's really stacking up for that. Archon's doing a fantastic job trading there as well. But look at the supply just bursting forward here for Shine. He's re-rallied everything to the middle, I think. And he's got 17 Hydras and 14 Lings. Pairs of Lings, in fact, on the way. No more Storm here, so he can't punish the Lurkers running forward in, uh, in a massive number. 
just has to kind of back away from this position and a defiler's made its way over here to the top right this is going to be a dead base it looks like not gonna allow that to occur not gonna allow this base to finish and very good on shine here for making that happen for getting up here to the top right quickly enough to deal with that uh before it really becomes an issue because if quickly like i said holds this and now he's got reavers here on the high ground imagine he's got all these cannons here with the reavers as well and the dark archon up here it's just so hard to break everything it really truly is well he's gonna have an opportunity here to try again oh the probe dies that's huge killing the probe here is massive he is on the high ground a lot of lurkers here but uh reavers i mean they can't be denied they're very very strong oh he loses the reaver to just some lings that's a bit unfortunate no pick up there no hot pickup from quickly just keep that alive no more reavers in production right now he starts another couple of shuttles he needs to actually pick up a probe i think and send it up here uh in the shuttle in order to get that base online he's starting to go into full defensive mode and this is the transition that happens a lot of the time in uh, zerg versus protoss is you start to switch into this mode where zerg is going to have the entire map he's going to have all the the pressure out on the map and it's going to be up to protoss to just defend those last few bases that are out there can i go after the evolution chambers here well jokes on him 3-3 is already done so that's really not going to do too much yeah going after the defiler mound a much better decision here but zealots making their way over towards the a mineral only here while more drops are coming into the main he's gonna try and drop some storms here with this army it looks like where are the storms okay he's got one storm um one storm on top of the hydras another storm on top of the hydras here gonna keep that templar alive long enough to pass a third storm as well but we've got no observer here no observer over here either but he's kind of breaking through right now this is kind of crazy where is the entirety of the army right now for shine he's actually being pulled apart pretty effectively at the moment dropping his supply quite low you know he was just completely maxed out for so long i think he was preparing to try and attack up into top right but he got caught off guard a little bit and here comes a drop with storm that could deal a lot of economic damage here where's the storm okay that's a pretty decent one storm actually saves the uh the shuttle here even with the one scourge you can't kill a shuttle my goodness some really good micro here with the shuttle just keeping that alive but one does hit can he get some hydras to actually finish this off i don't see any in the in the vicinity and i think there's more storms available in here he could go for another storm drop hit another one of these bases he's just gonna sit here over top of the high ground while more shuttles fly into the main he's really trying to break through here in the main trying to deal that damage while meanwhile a, a big attack coming in here to center right this is a ton of probes right now he's got to bail out of here with these probes as soon as possible can't afford to remake all those right now he doesn't have the base in the top left actually figured out just yet he's got you know some defenses over there he's got uh cannons up there but he hasn't been able to transfer the workers over to that location getting in and killing off these lurkers but this is just pure zealot against pure lurker so zealots are not going to trade very efficiently and he does clean that up this base has been taken out probes are going to maneuver around here oh threading the needle with the probes he actually gets a bunch of them up into top right that's crazy that was a really wild play um i would not recommend that if there was just two lurkers here there was only okay there was two but they weren't quite in position to catch those probes if they had been all the probes would have died and quickly would have been on like a very sad number of probes here comes that shuttle finally it's going to go in for the storm drop can he actually get any value out of this the scourge is chasing it will be able to kill once it connects but it takes so long for it to connect he even forces the drones to run and then come back can he get one more storm here meanwhile reavers are hitting oh can he save this he does save the shuttle um reavers are actually gonna hit over here uh for the moment do we have a defiler in this army he could easily break this high ground wait okay there's reavers here i thought he pulled all the reavers away but 12 o'clock does go down a great trade here 
right now for quickly can you get a storm no no storm unfortunately got to keep that reaver shuttle alive really important that he does that Ooh, coming around for the big flank right now oh a great maelstrom plus the storm here gonna wreck these units on the right hand side and maybe this will open up a way for quickly to actually disengage from this fight whoa the storm on top of his own units was not correct I'm not sure what was happening there but he kind of botches it at the end he was doing so so well um there was a lot more coming for shine so that was definitely gonna die but he might have been able to trade a little bit better if he didn't storm his own units just throw that down on some links or maybe some advancing hydralis there but the dark archon here finally gonna go down that's a bit sad that thing was in this game for a very long time Really, since like minute eight or something like that. But uh, it has been taken out. Some lurkers here are going to get uh, surrounded while still in their egg form. And here, Archon Zealot is a great composition when it comes to these late game situations. You know there's going to be tons and tons and tons of lings thrown at you. So why not just go for... Masses of Archons and Storm. Overlord here with some Lurkers inside of it. Can I get some big damage? Oh, I think I might have missed something. Storm uh, available inside of this shuttle. He'll probably utilize that to, to clear out these, uh, these Lurkers here if he notices. Oh my god, this is getting so much damage right now. Seven kills, eight kills now. Oh, uh, he's losing so many workers up there in the top right. That is brutal. Meanwhile, he's going to try and get a storm down here. Goes pretty well. Yeah, not bad at all. This is nine kills. But he's got no probes in the top right. All the probes are gone. Every single probe has been killed. He's got a bunch of probes here, mining one mineral patch. He's got quite a few down here, but we're running low. Attack into the middle of the map. And it's just pure zealot again. Zealot Archon with a few scattered storms. Is that going to be enough to hold on against Shine here, who just has an insane economy? 190 supply quickly is on the ropes. Really, really struggling at this point. If he can clear this out, I think he just noticed, actually, top right. Man, he was um, losing probes for quite a long time here. Six kills on that. 12 kills on this one. Ooh. Oh my goodness. That's so painful. And more probes are going to be sent up to the top right. Another Reaver being sent here as well. Uh, that should be able to deal with the uh, Reaver there. Probes are going to be chased. Hydra's here trying to snipe some Templar. Are going to eat that storm though. That is so many Zealots. Oh my goodness. That's so many Zealots. It's time to make a lot of Lurkers here, I think, as Shine. Like a big wave of lurkers should be coming out here pretty soon. More drones. I don't think that's what we need. But I guess he did take some serious damage earlier. I'm going to try and break up here into the 12 o'clock. He really doesn't want to let another base come up for Shine right now. But he's losing army in the middle of the map while he's trying to take this. And I think he just barely cleaned out top right. So he's actually going to establish top right. And he's going to kill this base here at 12 o'clock again. This is... I mean, good. This is good for quickly. Um, he just needs to evacuate this position. Don't take this fight right now. Um, I'm going to let the zealots all go down here. That's a lot of zealots, man. Holy. Are we actually going to turn and try to fight this? Oh, the shuttle goes down really quick, but... Um, does manage to bail out the reaver in time. We've got a Defiler here. It could be throwing down plagues on all this, but... Shine, a little bit distracted right now is something. I'm looking around the map right now. I don't see what it could be. Really would like to get a plague on all of this. The zealots just become so meltable with the plague on top. Looks like he will come forward for that now, but quickly already backing away. Can we get a good one on this? Reaver, no, he gets four zealots. Not bad. We'll take it. Base going to come up here on the low ground. This still has quite a bit of money as well. So, quickly going to go full defensive mode here. He can still, you know, throw some drops in here and there. 
Um, this one actually doesn't have anything in it, so I don't know what's headed headed down here right now. It's actually heading into the main. It's completely empty. Another drop of lurkers here uh, into this top right. Looks like it got a bunch of kills. Seven and two. So another nine kills go down. 34 workers remain here for quickly. Struggling hard right now to put together an economy. Reaver, the correct answer here for any lurker drop. But it was a little bit late now. Tons of lurkers coming up. The storm's just absolutely critical damage there. Killing off so many lurkers, but targeting down the Archons. Does not manage to get that one. How many kills on these? 16. Holy. The storm going down, just crushing these lurkers right now. Getting great, great trades. But meanwhile, a doom drop coming into the top right hand corner. This is Shine's Gambit. To try and finish this game right here, right now. Can he make it work? I think he can. This is so much... So many units here. The Reaver goes down immediately. The probes are going to start to fall here. So many of them go down. Only 24 probes remain. They're all at 6 o'clock. And Quickly is going to end up losing the space. Wow, Quickly really doesn't have much left right now. The 12 o'clock has been retaken. Quickly wants to do some sort of attack right now. I don't think that's the right call. I, I, I guess he doesn't really have much of a choice otherwise. This has been a brilliant handling of a late game ZVP from Shine. Very nice control shown out of him this entire game. He's handled the, the storm drops extremely well and the lurker drops have been incredibly effective. The Reaver here now, but kind of last hope, really, for quickly. He's really trying to get as much damage out of that as possible. A couple of cannons here just evaporate to the Cracklings. And that's going to be the last base of quickly going down. Throwing down a few final storms before he taps out. Quickly out of gas here, out of money, out of resources. And army supply is plummeting. Just 50 army supply now to 177. You know, it would almost be still okay if he had reavers and cannons and storms here. Even with this little supply, it might still be sort of doable. But GG is called. You can hold off an insane amount with just a bunch of units right here. With just a bunch of splash damage. Um, or on top of the ramp. But the drop... Proved to be highly, highly effective. Shine wins the game with it. The Doom Drop coming in clutch here for Shine. And this is just a great example of Shine not being a bag of builds anymore. He is indeed a consummate professional macro player. Um, I still yearn for the days though, man. I still miss Shine when he was that type of player when he was that bag of builds when he was that swiss army zerg um watching him pull players apart with the wackiest builds was so much fun but um maybe we'll see shine you know continue to develop his macro style and then lean on his bag of builds and his uh sneaky tactics uh, in the future when push comes to shove in the asl or something like that anyways guys that's it from me thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you tomorrow